Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Theme Park Obsession video. My name is Dylan and thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today I'm hanging out at Universal Studios Hollywood to have some fun and check up on the roller coaster, the all new Fast and the Furious roller coaster. So how about you and I dive right in. Made it to the front entrance and yeah, it is busy today. And just like that, we've officially made it in the park. Let's head inside the gift shop really quick because I think they have some Quiet Place merchandise. Yeah, every time they announce Halloween Horror Nights Haunted House, they usually have some merchandise that coincides with that announcement. And here it is right here, Halloween Horror Nights 2024. Heck yeah, I am so ready. And look, they have some merchandise ready to go for us with the Halloween Horror Nights 2024 mug. The Quiet Place on the sign, it says, Rule number one, don't make a sound. You know, I won't. I'll, I'll try my best. And this mug is heat reactive, so it has a little special effect when you put hot water in there. And we also have the t-shirt available. It's a pretty cool t-shirt, I love that. The claw marks on the front and then on the back it has the rule number one. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for this haunted house. I can't wait. And it looks like that is it because we do have some Psycho merchandise here. There's really nothing else on the other sides. See what's going on over here. Yeah, some more Bates Motel stuff. And then classic Universal Monster uh, merchandise available. We do have some Chucky stuff right here. Might be left over from last year's Halloween Horror Nights. $33 for that. And if you're wondering on the price, that is also $33. I'm ready for it though. I am so ready for Halloween Horror Nights. And they also have some Pride merchandise available. Just wanted to get this before we move on to the coaster. But yeah, they have a fan, they have some shot glasses, a t-shirt. Love is universal. Heck yeah. And we have some more stuff here on the other end. We have hoodies, zip up hoodies. And what's really cool about Universal is not every theme park does this, but Universal through August donates all of the profits from all this merchandise to local nonprofit organizations that support and engage in the LGBTQ plus community. So that's pretty cool. Okay, first order of business is the Halloween Horror Nights Haunted House being built at the Parisian Courtyard. Oh yeah, look at all of this here at the Parisian Courtyard for this Halloween Horror Nights Haunted House. It's looking great already. Yeah, the archway right here has been fully completed and it's looking like this could be another cemetery setting, maybe a mausoleum, that's what Michael's been saying, and I think I'm leaning towards that as well. And also, if you look closely, you can see some electrical hookups here for maybe audio or lighting. And they also have a sign out here in the front, just in case people are not sure what's going on. They, they're not building the roller coaster here, they're actually working on Halloween Horror Nights. And you can get your tickets, they're on sale right now. Yeah, this is looking so nice already. It's pretty big in person too. I know it's it looks big on camera, but when you're standing right next to it, it's yeah, it's quite large. Large. So I'm super stoked to see what this looks like as a finished product once they, you know, they age it and they put all the texture and everything on it. I think it's going to look really, really cool. Go ahead and comment down below. What other building do you think this could be if it's not like a cemetery setting? Yeah, at this point it could still be anything. We're still a little early on in the build process to really figure out what this could be. So maybe sometime late this month or maybe even into July when they start putting more texture and details on this we'll get a better idea of what it could be. But remember, this one hasn't been announced just yet. The only uh, haunted house that has been announced here in Hollywood is A Quiet Place based off the first and second movie. Which, speaking of A Quiet Place, this is where it's gonna be located right here in the old Walking Dead attraction. Last year, Evil Dead Rise was here and John Murdy confirmed this year that this is where A Quiet Place is gonna be going. And he also confirmed that they're reconfiguring everything in there. So it's really, really exciting. I can't wait. But again, this is the only confirmed haunted house location for this year's Halloween Horror Nights. More announcements I'm sure will be coming later on this summer. And also as I was working my way towards the Walking Dead building, got another little shot of the facade at the Parisian Courtyard. And it looks like we have two windows on the facade as well. So yeah, I don't know. Could this be a mausoleum or something that we'd see in a cemetery or? I think it's something else. Alrighty, made it to the lookout where this is the main focus of today's video. That is the Fast and the Furious roller coaster here at Universal Studios Hollywood opening up in 2026. But they've made a lot of great progress since my last video. And they've put up a lot more support columns and track, which is amazing. But before we talk about all that fun stuff, we're gonna focus our attention down here where they've been moving so much dirt it's insane. Just like I said in the last video, shout out to the crews that have been working on this because I'm sure it's very frustrating having to move this much dirt around and the concrete work on top of that. I mean, the concrete work is insane and we haven't seen anything like this since Tatsu at Magic Mountain. So it's been a while since we've seen a really cool terrain coaster, which is 
making this even more exciting. But yeah, down over here with these footers, there's really nothing new that I can see except the concrete has been poured and cured for these big uh, columns right here. And then there's some that have been dug out closest to the crane, which I'm sure they'll work on here very, very soon. But then this side of the hill doesn't really have too much going on as far as footers are concerned. They haven't marked, I mean, there's some that are in the ground because we saw them put rebar in the ground, but anything else like this that's visible, I don't see any markers just yet. And then off in the distance right there, it's kind of hard to see. I know there's footers on this side of the railing, but over here, there's really nothing just yet. I'm sure they've put some rebar in the ground that we just can't see like in this section, but yeah, not too much happening on this side of the hill. I'm wondering what kind of elements are gonna be here. If we're gonna see a couple inversions in this spot, or if it's gonna be a lot of like terrain hugging turns and drops. Either way, I'll take it. This is, I think this is gonna be an awesome roller coaster. I, th I still think this is going to be one of the best roller coasters in Southern California uh, when it's complete because with the spinning aspect and the onboard audio and all that kind of stuff with the elements, th yeah, this is gonna be spectacular. All right, moving up to the top deck though, so much work happening up here again. Like I've said in every single video, most of the work is happening on this section right now. And then they'll probably eventually move their way down to this area. Yeah, lots of support columns have shown up and have been put in place along with track, which is very, very exciting. And I think it's pretty much confirmed that the coaster will split off around this section and into the dual load after it makes that right-hand turn. So dual load is awesome. That means this will be a people eater if uh, they're super efficient with uh, capacity and everything, yeah, this, this will be really, really nice. And I'm curious, once they start testing, how quickly they're gonna be able to dispatch trains and all that kind of fun stuff. That's always the thing with these roller coasters, is you kind of hope for the best hourly capacity possible because the park does get busy and you don't wanna be waiting in line too long. And that's what's great about Velocicoaster, even now with the Express Pass added to it. Velocicoaster's dispatches are insanely quick. They have so many crew members in the station loading people on and off the ride and it, it just goes by really really fast so the fact that we have dual load here which they'll probably use a lot of the time is is fantastic i wouldn't be surprised if this thing gets close to maybe 2000 an hour if they're lucky velocicoaster uh, has a little bit over 1500 i believe so if they can get close to 2000 on this one that's excellent but now that they have some track in place let's go around the corner to french street again get a nice view of that newly installed track and you can also see that they have installed the motors for the drive tires oh yeah here we go this is so darn cool and this again popped up like out of nowhere so here in the upper lot the first thing that you're pretty much going to notice on this new track work are the motors for the drive tires there's so many of them and there's probably so many of them because of how large these coaster trains are going to be they're going to weigh a lot so they need the extra tires there to propel those trains to the next block section, which will be the load and unload area. And another way I can tell that these coaster trains are gonna be really large is based off the track itself. Like the gauge of this is insane. So that probably explains why the drive tire you know, number and then also the size of the support columns themselves. You know, a lot of the support columns on this coaster are very large. And this is probably why, because of all the weight and the stress that's gonna be on this ride. I wouldn't be surprised if the coaster track itself is very similar in size to Revenge of the Mummy, which is a premier attraction, or the Green Gots roller coaster at Universal Orlando. Now there's already a pretty long straightaway with this piece of track or some of the pieces of track with most of the drive tire areas. And I'm thinking this is where the station is gonna be, or at least it's gonna start, because then there's another split closest to the Simpsons land that went in very, very early. That piece of track, that like transfer track thing, went in a few months ago. So I'm thinking that's where the end of the station is gonna be. And then the launch segment will be directly after it. I don't think there's gonna be much time to think about your decision once you leave that station. I think it's gonna be right away into the first launch and into the first element. Overall, really good progress happening up here in the upper lot. And I wouldn't be surprised here in the next couple of days, even more pieces of track go in, more support columns for the station. And then obviously the, the brake run area, because we haven't seen that go in. And I'm sure that will be an, another section of track that will go in here in the next couple of days. Made it over to the other side of the escalator. We're gonna make our way down the first one. We're not gonna go all the way down to the lower lot, but here's your look at these footers right here again looking the same like they did in the previous video but I cannot wait for the support columns to show up over here and they have this section 
all roped off. So I wonder if they're gonna do some cool landscaping right here. Made it down the first escalator and look at this. Again, a huge, massive section of rebar for a footer that will eventually hold a support column. And look at this. In the last video, when I was with my buddy Carter, we were trying to figure out if some of these were like, something something may have, may have happened and they have to get rid of them, which now they're bagged, right? But look at this down here. The ones that we thought maybe were a mistake or something, it looks like they're just being covered by the rebar and they'll just pour right over them. So very, very interesting. And a lot of my construction buddies commented down below in the previous video saying that it could have been from old signage, you know, the old universal sign that was here, maybe some old infrastructure that has just been in the hill for the longest time. So that could have been it. Cause this one right here is also spray painted. The scale of this is so crazy. It's huge. And there's multiples of them. This one right here is also very massive. Two support columns will go right here. One big massive one in this section. And then you have two more right here that are gonna be going in, but then there's this right here. So I'm wondering if this will be just one big section of concrete as well. I can't wait to see this support column right here. And I'm wondering if it's gonna hold multiple pieces because we've seen that in the past too. There'll be like one giant piece that will hold maybe two different sections. So we'll keep an eye on this area for sure. And then I wonder how big they're gonna be going up this section too. And I wonder if anything's gonna pop up on this side of the hill, like maybe where this tent is, but it looks like there's some like electrical and some infrastructure that they might not touch. The road might be safe because this is a fire road that accesses the top half of the theme park for the uh, firefighters. So they might not touch that, but yeah, this is, this is so cool. And you can clearly see more rebar is ready to go for wherever spot it's going. It looks like this is done. That one's pretty much done. These are both ready for concrete. So, so these uh, sections of these bundles of rebar will go in these three areas right here. But again, yeah, these bags, I wonder if they're just gonna try to take those out entirely. And then on the retaining wall, it looks like the rebar is all set and ready to go for a concrete pour. So it's more permanent. It's also crazy how close it gets to the footpath right here. So I can imagine they're gonna put some netting for the coaster when it goes over, because it's gonna be going over this section of the escalator. So it'll be going up and over and doing something over here. Moving on though, really quick to Halloween Horror Nights. Here's your look at the facade. Work happening behind Revenge of the Mummy on this unannounced haunted house. And it's looking like that white color might've been the final color because now they've started to age it. They've put a little distress on that white coat. So there you go. I don't think we've seen a white facade in a long, long time. So this is pretty cool. Now what's interesting is that the front of that facade had like right underneath the archway, it looks like pieces of a wall have been broken out or something's going on there. I'm not really sure what this one could be. I'm still thinking it's like a, the entrance to maybe a train station or some sort of depot or I don't know, something like that because there's a little tiny building out front as well in front of the archway that looks like a little ticket booth. So maybe this is, yeah, again, a bus stop or a train stop or something. Go ahead and comment down below for this one as well. What do you think this one is gonna be? And judging by like that first layer of distress on the facade, I'm thinking that Scenic has fully moved in. So we're gonna see a lot more details here in the next few weeks leading up into like the middle to late summer, which would be really cool. Cause again, I'm super interested to see what this one is gonna be. And as far as any intellectual property, I have no idea what IP this could be. It could also be an original haunted house because Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood likes to throw in a few originals. So yeah, you never know. And then off in the distance behind Transformers, really can't see much with that Halloween Horror Nights haunted house. I'm not gonna ride the tram today, so we're gonna skip out on that. But as far as anything else exterior wise that we can see from this point, not too much. Back to the coaster though. With the near misses, I cannot wait for you know the possible near misses and head choppers and all that kind of fun stuff that might be on this attraction. There might be a few good ones because most of the coaster action is gonna be happening right here. So yeah, maybe we'll get a few head choppers and good near misses. You can see that this retaining wall might receive the same treatment as this one up here near the upper lot. So eventually down the road here in the next month or so, they'll put rebar on this and pour a bunch of concrete there to reinforce it. Okay, from this angle, you can see those footers way off in the distance over there near the new uh, Universal Campus, Universal Creative Campus. And they are massive, just like the one that's over here. Wow, the fact that you can see the scale of them way over here is pretty impressive. Now, before I officially wrap it up for today's very quick Universal Studios update video, I wanted to jump in here to the gift shop to check out some of the new 
Harry Potter merch. Now, some of this stuff might not be brand new, but for $70, this looks pretty new to me. They also have some bucket hats available. It's pretty neat. How much is the bucket hat? $34 billion, no, $34. And then let's put that back right there. And we also got some mugs. I think I've seen these before, but again, not entirely sure. $21 for the mug. And if you need some workout leggings, well, here you go. Small, that's the price of those. Small price. No, these aren't Epic Universe medallions. They're actually Harry Potter coins. There you go, for $8. Ooh, and we have a button-up shirt. Not really sure if I like that texture, but some might. $70 for the button-up t-shirt, kind of expensive. And everything else is looking the same, so yeah, I think it was just the stuff in the front. Well, I think that's gonna do it for today's video from Universal Studios Hollywood. I hope you enjoyed this quick update from Fast and the Furious and of course, Halloween Horror Nights. If you did and you're excited for all of that stuff, you can let me know by smashing the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and you love these videos from Universal Studios Hollywood or some of your other favorite theme parks, consider subscribing because I have brand new videos every single week that you won't want to miss out on. Be sure to check out my Instagram account because I post updates there. And also, if you want to support the channel even more, you can do so by hitting the super thanks button down below. Until the next video though, I hope you have a beautiful day, morning, evening, whatever it is. I'll see you next time in the parks. Bye.